Hello, I am Seema and welcome to the last and the 44th part of the chapter Equilibrium. In this video, I am going to discuss the subtopic Common Ion Effect on Solubility of Ionic Salts. In the previous two videos, I told you about buffer action and how, and I told you a little bit about how common ion effect is responsible for the buffering action of the salts or the buffer solutions. Let us understand common ion effect and its effect on the solubility of salts a little better now. We know whenever you add a common ion, the equilibrium of the particular salt is disturbed. Why? Because one of the products is given by that common ion. Is one of the products is the common ion, due to which the concentration of the common ion increases. And therefore, the concentrations for equilibrium, that is the equilibrium constant Ksp, is, uh, is, not, is now becomes Qsp. <clears throat> The concentrations are different and therefore the ratio of the products, that is the concentration of the ions of the products to the reactant, it changes. And since the, for example, you have sodium chloride and sodium chloride dissociates into sodium ion and chloride ion and this is present in an equilibrium. And you add HCl to this. HCl dissociates into H positive and Cl negative where Cl negative is the common ion. So whatever was the value of the Ksp, that is concentration of sodium, concentration of chloride, and since sodium chloride is a solid, we will not consider that. On adding chloride ion to this, the concentration of the chloride ion increases and therefore the ratio or the Ksp now becomes Qsp, which is a value different from Ksp. And the reaction starts proceeding in that direction, which nullifies the effect of the change. So the reaction starts proceeding in the opposite direction so that the excess chloride which is present is used up and the ratio of the products to reactants that is the ions it becomes the same and when it becomes the same Ksp becomes equal to Qsp and that is desired and it establishes a new equilibrium. So this is the effect of a common ion. Whenever you add a common ion the common ion affects the equilibrium by shifting it in that direction that will undo its effect. And that is noticed in the case of uh, the solubility of salts also. When salts are being dissolved, the solubility will become less when you add a substance which has the common ion. Why would the solubility become less? Because the opposite reaction will start taking place. Now, in this example where I took where you have sodium chloride and you add HCl to it and the sodium chloride precipitates out. Why? Because of the presence of the common ion. In nature, when you get sodium chloride, it has impurities and impurities like sodium sulfate just has magnesium sulfate in it, which are which you do not want. So what do you do? You take the sodium chloride, you dissolve it in water, the impure sodium chloride and you add a common ion. And when you add the common ion, pure sodium chloride is crystallized out while the impurities like sodium sulfate and magnesium sulfate, they remain dissolved in the water. And when you separate out the crystals now, these crystals are absolutely super pure sodium chloride. So this is a technique that is used to obtain pure crystals of substances. And it is also used also if you have uh, metallic ions like silver which are rare, which are costly and they are present in very little quantity and you want to separate them out also, you want to extract them, you can extract them by the same technique and you will get the pure metal in its, in its salt form of course and then you, would, you could separate it out from there. So it is also used for the complete precipitation of a particular ion in its sparingly soluble salt, if it has a salt which is sparingly soluble, yet whatever little has dissolved in water, you can get back your metal by common ion effect and by precipitating the salt again and getting it back with very low value of solubility product for gravimetric estimation. In gravimetric analysis, you want to find out accurately how much of salt is present and how much of it. So your, it is a quantitative measurement. So there you want to be very accurate. There also you can separate it out by crystallizing it. Therefore, you get very accurate. Uh, you get very precise amounts that this is the amount of salt that was present or that dissolved. 
So for this process, I mean for this crystallization by this process, silver usually, silver ions can be precipitated in the form of silver chloride. Ferric ions are commonly precipitated as fer ferric hydroxide. They actually form ferric oxide, but ferric oxide in water gets converted into ferric hydroxide and it crystallizes out, so it is separated out. Barium ions are also precipitated in the form of barium sulfate. So these are different ways by which we uh, separate out these crystals and we use common ion effect to uh, decrease the solubility of the salts and to get pure crystals. Now is the next topic that how does the solubility of a salt, how is it affected or how is it related to the pH of the solution? Now let us say you have a salt, the solubility of salts of weak acids like phosphates, it increases at low pH. You see, when the pH is low, at that time, the solubility of salts is affected. When is the pH low? The more acidic a solution is, the lesser is its pH. And the higher the pH, the lesser is the hydrogen ion concentration, right? So pH and hydrogen, because what is pH? pH is the minus log of the hydrogen ion concentration. So higher the hydrogen ion concentration, lower would be the value of pH. For example, uh, if the value of, uh, if the concentration of hydrogen ion is 10 to the power minus 5, then pH is 5 because it's the minus log of the hydrogen ion concentration. If the hydrogen ion concentration increases, let us say from 10 to the power minus 5 to 10 to the power minus 3, then what happens to the pH? The pH decreases from 5 to 3. So lower the pH, the more is the hydrogen ion concentration and more acidic is the solution. In other words, when the solution or the medium is acidic, that slows down. How does it affect, sorry, how does that affect the solubility of a sparingly soluble salt? That is what we want to understand. The solubility of salts of weak acids like phosphates, it increases at low pH. That is, if the solution is acidic, the solubility increases. This is because at lower pH, the concentration of the anion decreases due to its protonation. The anion that is formed, as it is the salt was sparingly soluble, but the anion that was formed, it gets protonated due to the presence of the acidic medium, the H positive ion being provided by the acid. And due to this protonation, the ion that is produced, the anion, that is trapped by the proton and it is used up and thereby decreasing the concentration of the anion. And since the concentration of the anion decreases, how does common ion effect uh, take place now here? Instead of increasing the concentration of the uh, product, you are decreasing the concentration of the product or it would mean that you are increasing the concentration of the reactant. So what happens? As, since the anion is being removed from the solution by its protonation, more salt will dissolve to provide that anion. And when more salt will dissolve, it means the solubility would increase. So we find that the solubility increases of a sparingly soluble salt increases when the pH of the solution is less. Lower the pH, greater is the solubility of a sparingly soluble salt. In order to explain this, this is a mathematical derivation which has been done. The derivation is just for explanatory purposes in your numerical problems. I have not seen any numerical where this has been used, but you could understand this in a mathematical way for those mathematical brains who need something mathematical to understand this. We know for the sparingly soluble salt, Ksp is the concentration of the cation and the anion product of these. The acidic solution is provided by an acid and the acid would be HX will dissociate into H positive and X negative. So what is the Ka, the equilibrium constant for the acid would be H positive concentration of H positive into concentration of X negative divided by the concentration of the acid, right? So that gives you the, um, the equilibrium constant for the acid. So if this is Ka, then if you rearrange this, what would you get X negative upon x negative upon hx we let this be here and we bring h positive to the other side will become ka upon h positive now flip these two flip both the sides so taking inverse on both the sides and adding one to both the sides what would you get hx upon now you are flipping it so this becomes hx upon x negative plus one 
and this becomes Ka, oh, sorry, H positive upon Ka plus 1. So when you solve this, what would you get? Hx upon x negative plus 1 would be Hx plus x negative, all x negative divided by x negative and this would become H positive plus, if you cross multiply this, Ka would be here and all of it divided by Ka. So now, after you get this, take an inverse again. When you take an inverse again, what do you get? You get x negative divided by hx plus x negative. So what have you done? You've taken all the species, that is the anion and the acid, which has that anion, and you've separated these species and you've found out this is a kind of a fraction of the anion from the species which have that anion in the acid and, the, uh, and in the soluble form or the protonated acid and in the soluble form. So this is the concentration of X negative. So this is taken to be equal to a factor F, a factor of fraction F you could call it, which is equal to, of course, this remains as it is, that is Ka divided by, uh, you are taking the inverse again, so it will be Ka divided by H positive plus Ka. Why have we taken, flipped these again? Why have we taken an inverse? Because we wanted to find the concentration, this fraction of the concentration, we want to see how is it related to H positive ion concentration. It is inversely proportional to the hydrogen ion concentration. So greater the value of F, smaller is the concentration of H positive. Or greater the value of F, greater should be the value of pH. Right? So from this, what do we see? That if F decreases, then pH should also decrease. And if F increases, pH should also increase. But this is only for the value of Ka. That is the acid that has been added. What about the salt solution now? So now we use this information, this factor has to be taken into consideration in the solubility equation. So for Ksp, we will now put this value. If S is the solubility for one mole of the particular salt, then the cation is S and the anion would be S from the salt and F is this factor from the acid and the effect of the acid. So you multiply this S by that factor. And therefore this would be equal to S square into F. And what is F? You substitute the value of F from here. Why do you do it? Because again, your idea, what is the aim? The aim is to find a relationship between Ksp, that is the solubility of the salt and the hydrogen ion concentration. So in order to do that mathematically, we now put this here. And when we do that, what do we see? What would S be equal to then? So Ksp becomes equal to S square into Ka upon Ka plus H positive. And therefore, what would S be then? S would be Ksp, Ksp divided by this value. So if you divide Ksp by this value, what would it be? Ksp upon Ka into Ka plus H positive. So you'll get Ksp upon Ka into H positive plus Ka. And since the square is to be removed, you'll find the square root of all of this. The idea of writing this was only to see that solubility is you have H positive Solubility increases with increase in hydrogen ion concentration and if it increases with increase of hydrogen ion concentration <coughs> then solubility increases with decrease of pH. Just to justify this, the, this mathematically this has been written. Now before I wind up this chapter, let me do one solved example with you. Give me a moment. Now this is question 7.28, the last solved example of this chapter. The question reads, calculate the molar solubility of nickel hydroxide in 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide. The common ion is hydroxide. The ionic product of nickel hydroxide is given to us, which is 2 into 10 to the power minus 15. So what is the reaction that is taking place for the dissociation of the salt? You have nickel hydroxide, Ni, OH hold twice, dissociating into Ni, sorry, Ni2 positive, nickel 2 positive, plus twice OH negative. So if you take the solubility of the salt to be S, then let us say that S uh, moles per liter of nickel ions were produced, then 2S moles per liter of sodium 
uh, of the hydroxide ions will be produced. But this solution does not have at equilibrium, these are the concentrations of the ions. But these, this is not the only source of the ions. The other source of hydroxide ions is sodium hydroxide. So you also have sodium hydroxide which dissociates into Na positive and OH negative. The common ion being this. The OH negative, you also have how much of this? 0.1 molar. So in other words, at equilibrium, what would the concentrations of both these ions be? Nickel and uh, OH negative. This is to be ignored because we, this is not the common ion. So for the solubility of the salt at equilibrium, the concentration of nickel ions would be S and that of, two OH, uh, of OH negative would be 2S plus 0.1 moles because this is molar and the unit for S is also moles per liter. So taking this, what would KSP be? KSP is equal to, would be equal to S into 2S plus 0.1 and the square of this, because the stoichiometric coefficient is 2. The square of this. Because this is the altered concentration of uh, OH negative ions. And the value of KSP is given to us, which is 2 into 2 into 0 0.0 into 10 to the power minus 15 is equal to S into 2s plus 0.1. Here I would like to bring to your attention that this is a sparingly soluble salt. Therefore, whatever the value of s is, is actually very, very small in comparison to 0.1. Therefore, 2s is also almost negligible in comparison to 0.1. So we could write this, we could ignore the 2s, the 2s being, so we'll say 2s being much, much, much less than 0 0.1, it can be ignored, it's negligible. Therefore, this becomes S into 0 0.1 whole square. Right? S becomes 0 0.1 whole square. Therefore, from this you can calculate solubility S. So, S would now be equal to 2.0 into 10 to the power minus 15 upon 0 0.1 whole square. And what is 0 0.1 whole square? 0 0.1 can be written as which is equal to 2.0 into 10 to the power minus 15 upon this could be written as 10 to the power minus 1 whole square which would be equal to 10 to the power minus 2. So this becomes 2.0 into 10 to the power minus 15 upon 10 to the power minus 2 which becomes equal to 2. 0 0.0 into 10 to the power minus 13 is the value of S and it would be molar that is moles per liter. So this is how you would calculate it. So whenever you are handling a common ion, something which is providing a common ion, you have to see what is, how is the concentration of that ion altered and then substitute that value for S, the altered value of that concentration and KSP is constant because it is the solubility product is a constant. Therefore, you will put it in that and then find out the value of S which will give you the solubility of the salt. We have been doing these similar problems in the previous couple of videos too. With that, I come to the end of this chapter. If you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.